Thank you, Dr. Ku, for being here with us. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Ku from Seoul National University Hospital, and this is my disclosure. We may have to wait for 10 seconds. Feels like 10 minutes. <laughs> So how many options do you have for side branches today? As you can see, there are a lot of options. So you can pick anyone, whatever you like, and do that. But before you do that, I think it should be understood that the, we are dealing with a very unique lesion because that the side branch or bifurcation lesion is one of the only lesions in 30 years of PCI history in which drug-eluting stent implantation is not better than angioplasty and even the angioplasty is not better than leave it alone strategy. So to make it a, to, to, to know the better strategy or to develop a better device, what we need is a better understanding on this very unique lesion subset. So today I'd like to talk about the physiologic aspect of bifurcation lesion and side branch options. You know very well about the fraction flow reserve. This is a pressure derived flow parameter which reflects both the stenosis severity and the myocardial territory. FFR less than 0.75 in general means that the presence of myocardial ischemia and needs revascularization. So simply speaking, it's like a performing a functional test in a cath lab, which has a very, very high spatial resolution. So when you encounter this kind of jail side branches and want to measure FFR, what you need to do is just push the pressure wire down to the lesion and give some adenosine then you'll easily get this number, and this is how you measure the FFR. So why, so it's, it's, but it's a little bit complicated. So we have to ask ourselves that the, why this complicated physiologic evaluation is needed for this side branch. It is mainly due to the very unique feature and nature of the side branch lesions, because that the size of the vessel itself and size of the myocardium supplying the supplied by the side branch is highly variable. And due to the very unique flow dynamic pattern in the bifurcating segment and side branch lesions, plaque lesion location is also very unique. It usually have a very eccentric plaque with negative remodeling. And furthermore, if you consider the mechanism of side branch <coughs> jailing after main branch stent implantation, it's very complicated. We know that the corina shift occurs, plaque shift occurs, some stent struts and thrombus are making this <coughs> side branch trailing. So that the, for those very complicated matter, it is very difficult to be assessed and evaluated by the anatomical tools. You know this very well. So today I'd like to talk about the, how we can use the FFR in non-left main bifurcation stenting. And let's start with the pre-intervention cases. So this was shown by the Dr. Dawson that the, we know that the, there is a discrepancy between the angio and functional significance of the lesion at the osteo lesion. In this study, among the lesion with more than 70% stenosis, only 20% of the lesion had a functional significance. Now, when we compare the IVUS and FFR in pure osteo lesion, in main branch osteo lesion, the best cutoff value to define the functional significance was 3.5 square millimeter, and in side branch, it was 1.8 square millimeter. But if you see the positive predictive value of these numbers, it's very low. Main branch, 69, but the side branch, it's 50%. So it's just exactly the same as flipping the coin, right? So that's the reason why discrepancy occurs. So this lesion, to my eye, looks like a true 011 bifurcation lesion, and it was also seen by the CT and by IBUS luminary was 2.8 for LAD and 2.7 for uh, diagonal branches. But if you measure the FFR, you'll see that the LAD FFR is 0.89, diagonal FFR is 0.94, so that the, you don't need to think about complex intervention for these lesion. So how, how can you believe these numbers? Some may say, I don't want to believe these numbers. And, but the, during the two-year clinical follow-up, the patient didn't have any symptom, no event, and the exercise test was performed, and there's no <coughs> evidence of ischemia at the maximum exercise. So let me show you these three uh, bifurcation looks like lesion. So it seems to be 111 true bifurcation. And I don't think it's bifurcation. And this lesion seems to be 001 bifurcation. So that if you believe in I, 
in your eyes so that it should be like that. So if you do the eyeballs, you can get the different information. But let's measure FFR for this season to see what will happen and how the strategy can be changed. So for this, looks like severe, but the LAD FFR 0.82, diagonal 0.89. So functionally, it's not a bifurcation lesion. But for this lesion, LAD 0.73, diagonal branch 0.77, it's bifurcation lesion. So this one, diagonal FFR is 0.73. So you may think that, the, wow, this is true 0, 0, 001 lesion. But if you do a pullback, you'll find a totally different thing. So when you do a pullback from LAD, we found that the pressure step up occurred not here, but the, at the LA, LAD ostium and this the left main. So it was double checked by the circumflex pullback, and we found that the additional step up occurs at the distal left main. So this is not a 0, 0, 001 true bifurcation lesion, but this is a distal left main bifurcation lesion. So for, for this kind of cases, we learned that the FFR can reduce unnecessary complex intervention. But there's something you should know before applying the FFR pre-intervention because that the <laughs> FFR less than 0.75 does not always mean the clinical importance of the side branch stenosis. So that the, your number from the side <coughs> branch cannot be applied to fame result. Understand? Because the myocardial mass is totally different. And the other thing is that the, as I shown you earlier in 001 like lesion, side branch FFR ref reflects both the side branch and main branch lesion. So that the, you have to discriminate that, you have to always do the pullback. And third thing is that the pre-intervention side branch FFR is usually not that helpful to predict the jail side branch FFR. Now let's move to the after main branch stenting implantation. We've been, uh, we've been a counter, a countering this kind of jail side branch lesions several times. So before we do something for that jail side branch lesion, I think we should ask to ourselves whether do we have a valid mm -hmm. criteria for intervention of side, jail side branch lesions? Unfortunately not. So if you review the paper and to see the percentage of side branch angioplasty among these you know, well-known, recently published, you know, major randomized clinical trial in a provisional arm, the, the, the percentage of side branch angioplasty varies around 20 something to 100% due to the dif different lesion subset and due, due to the different criteria for side branch angioplasty, and we don't know which is the right answer. And the other things which is more complicated is that the, there's a discrepancy between the FFR and percent diameter stenosis assessed by QCA. You've seen this figure quite well. So the thing is that the, when you say there's some, some stenosis have a 70% stenosis, basically you cannot predict where the FFR would be. So that the by angiographic per, percent diameter stenosis, you cannot estimate the FFR. So that's the problem of Jewish side branch lesion. And uh, this kind of concept was published in 2005 and later the, the other group, this is the Curzon group, and this is from Northern Baltic Bifurcation Side Branch Substudy, and all the same results was uh, reproduced through the following studies. So <coughs> let's test our eyes again. So to my eye, it looks very straightforward. Significant, 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 I don't know, but significant. So that the, if you can be accurate more than 50% of these cases, I can tell you you don't need FFR in your life. Mm -hmm. But let's test it. So 0 0.67, most will be right on this. 0 0.93, 9384, 95, 81, 74, 92. That's unbelievable number. But the, most of these cases were later confirmed by the other functional test and by the IVUS. There's a reason why there's a discrepancy between our eyes and FFR. So what about the outcome of those FFR-guided side branch intervention strategy? When, when you serially measure the jail side branch FFR just after stenting, and six months later, we found there's not much difference in most cases. There's some decrease in FFR, but in general, there's not much uh, FFR drop during follow-up. And in general, there's a slight increase in FFR, or the, there's a lot, some functional gain during six months follow-up in non-intervening geosite branch lesion. 
So again, even after main branch stenting, FFR can reduce unnecessary compl com complex inter intervention. But you should know that the most data were obtained in very short osteo side branch lesions. Therefore, these results cannot be applied as they are to diffuse side branch lesion. And this is my personal recommendation and never jail the pressure wire with the stent. You will break it. So, so now let's do a kiss for this branch and oh, let's see what FFR can do for th that kiss situation. Again, after kissing, you have to determine whether you put a stent or additional angioplasty and review the textbook, whether there is a valid criteria to follow. But again, there's nothing like that. So it varies from 3% to 31%, 10 times difference in the penetration rate of the side branch stenting according to the various different <coughs> criteria. And we don't know yet which is the best one. So for this case, this is a before intervention and after main branch stenting and after side branch angioplasty. You see that something happens, but the, to my eye, it's not satisfactory at all. So if you just believe in your eyes, what you need to do is uh, do additional side branch angioplasty with a bigger balloon or to put a stent. But if you measure the FFR, you will see that the, what you did is quite good to the patient. FFR increased from 0 0.72 to 0.89, and to me, uh, I'm quite satisfied with this results, and I don't want to put a stent there. So when we measure the FFR in jail side branches before and after kissing balloon inflation, even though mean residual stenosis was around 60 to 70 percent, FFR increased from 0.65 to 0.85 with one single uh, kissing balloon inflation, and this functional gain was maintained during at least six months follow-up. There was some functional late loss, but the, it, in general, there's no statistically, statistically different changes in there. And this kind of concept was again approved by the you know, side branch FFR sub-study of Nordic Baltic bifurcation study. Here is the serial follow-up after PCI and follow-up FFR changes in no kissing group, and this is the, that changes in kissing group. As you, as you can see here, no kissing group and kissing group by means, there's no big difference during six months follow-up. So which means that the, once it is good at, 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 the, at the end of the procedure, it's good at least for one year. So again, what you know after side branch angioplasty to apply the FFR is that the functional late loss depends on the degree of injury you gave to the patient. So it does not always like their slight, small functional late loss, so that if you made a big dissection, you have to expect more functional late loss. And you don't need to measure FFR in cases of severe dissection or slow flow, because don't think about FFR, just go ahead and put a stent there. What about after side branch stenting? We don't have that much data, but the, there is int two interesting studies, although the number is small. Dr. Chen's group did the FFR in, in his DK double kissing crush study and compared the FFR in DK group and first stent group, provisional group, which was ended in most cases with the side branch angioplasty. Uh, if you see the final results of the side branch FFR, DK group had a higher FFR than one stent group. And here, another a smaller stent. In, in this study, they compared the pre-kissing balloon and post-kissing balloon FFR in crushed patients. We know very well after crush, uh, kissing balloon inflation is mandatory. So they compare it. They found it that the, it was 0 0.94 before kissing and after kissing it increased to 0 0.97. But the, you have to understand that the even before kissing and even after provisional stenting, FFR is already good, right? In this provisional group, FFR was 0 0.9. Uh, in this crush group, even before the kissing balloon angioplasty, <coughs> FFR was already good, so that the, you have to uh, seriously think about this result. So what I can learn from this study is that the, when you apply the FFR after side branch stenting, you should understand that the, when FFR is bad, it really is bad. You have to do something. But even if FFR is good, for example, 0 0.9, 0 0.3, you have to always understand that this does not guarantee the excellent outcomes of complex intervention for bifurcation lesion. So in summary, ladies and gentlemen, FFR-guided intervention strategy for bifurcation is, is feasible. 
And this strategy can reduce unnecessary intervention and its related complication. However, to use FFR for these very complex bifurcation lesions properly, adequate knowledge on coronary physiology and the limitation of FFR is definitely required. Thank you very much for your attention.